I mean, we'll see how much defensive depth Mississippi State has. Uh, getting off to a fast start is really important. I agree with you. This Tech Sacks Rewind presented by Bex in the Rollo Insurance Makeshift Studio was uh, taped in front of a live studio audience. As you can tell, there's a lot of folks in the background. We are doing some remodeling downstairs, so I did most of the show upstairs, um, but it was a good show. Zoe, what was your favorite part of the program? you got to tell the mic, though. Um, definitely the talk about Connor Wegman. Excited to see him on the field this year. 24 and 24, he was our number one. Cade, your favorite part? I thought the interview with Scott Elliott was pretty good. He, was, uh, he had a lot of good insight on A&M and A&M Notre Dame matchup. Fun, eight days away. That's right. And the real deal, Reggie McNeil was in studio. We chit-chatted with him. And, of course, the executive editor, co-owner of TechSags, Billy Lucci. That and more, it's the Rewind. Number one on the list, uh, Olin, we touched on him a moment ago. His name is? Connor Wigman. Love him. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Look, I, shh, he may be the biggest kept secret in college football. I know the people that really follow college football, like the the, the list that you just referenced, yeah. know about him. But I think uh, nationally, he's probably still got a stealth quality to him because uh, of his injuries. He hadn't been able to, well, his injury, not injuries. Yep. He hadn't had been able to play a lot. But when he's when he's healthy, games he started and finished. Uh, he's been spectacular. I, I've, I've talked about this. If you look at the games he started and finished, there's seven of them. And if you take the averages that he compiled in those games, understanding that he did that as yeah. a freshman in one game uh, in a Jimbo's offense and one of the in one game with horrific weather against UMass. But if you take all those things together, he still and you, and you take the averages of those seven games and then project it over a thirteen game schedule because I think they're at least going to be in a bowl game. You're looking at a guy throwing for over three thousand yards with more than thirty touchdowns and just three interceptions. Well, what take that now? But yeah. I think that might be conservative. I think you uh, look at Connor Wigman and you start saying, "Hey, um, thirty five hundred yards." 35 touchdowns, you know, th those are the kind of things that this kid's capable of. And there's just, and plus he can run. So there's just not a lot of, uh, a lot of quarterbacks that can do the things that, that Connor can do. The only question is the people around him. And I think they've got maybe better people around him than you think. And, uh, I'm expecting a big, big year out of Connor Wigman. Yeah. That'll probably translate to a pretty good year for Texas A&M. I'm really bullish on this staff that Coach Elko's put together. We know he's a great head man, but he's put on some other guys around him to really make this, I think, offense pop with Colin Klein. Defensively, Jay Bateman's an extension of Coach Elko. Tommy Moffitt, strength and conditioning. A lot of others as well. And I, I think Bateman is an underrated hire here. Uh, in, in looking at this, People want to say, like, hey, he was benefited at Army uh, because of the tempo that Army plays with. And sure, on the surface numbers, I, I agree with that. But even if you adjust for tempo, or, like Army played well above its talent score uh, for me. And then I don't think that anybody's going to have success running a defense at North Carolina uh, because of the lack of physicality at North Carolina. I think it's kind of a soft program. And also the tempo they run with is is real difficult. So I, I really don't bang Bateman for that. I think ba Bateman's a pretty bright guy. And I... I like that hire a lot. I, I think the staff that Elko has put together is is really pretty good. It, if I have a question, honestly, it's uh, the the receiver coach choice was interesting to me. I, I thought Bama's receiver development over the past three or four years has been horrid, and I'm like that. Maybe he knows something there that I don't know, uh, but like that's the one that kind of stood out. Like, huh, kind of funny. But the rest of the staff, I loved. We, we've been pretty. Uh... Bullish with Holman Wiggins. He's a really good recruiter. And unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot of wide receiver development here at AM the last few years as well. So we think it is an this upgrade is and also O line coach. Yeah, no doubt. I, I thought the O line coach was a great was a great pickup too. So I started the show with this thought. If I have any hesitation on AM this year, it's the beginning part of the season because sometimes it takes time to figure the new system out against, you know, big teams. And they're taking on Notre Dame early on. They're taking on Florida on the road. They haven't won on the road since 2021 when they beat Missouri. That's a long, that's a long time. So how important do you think to their season, this first couple of weeks of the season, really uh, what, what it will propel them to? I, I think it's huge for them. If you look at, look at the schedule here, I mean, if you get Texas a if, if you get Notre Dame in that opener, a and is going to be favored to make the playoff. Like that That's how hard it's going to shift. Because if, if you can beat Notre Dame, I mean, at Florida, 
I've been reading Florida's practice reports, as I'm sure a lot of Aggies fans have as well, and, and they doesn't look great. So maybe they're not that much better uh, than they were last year. I do have them as an improved team, but you know, they played pretty poorly at times. I like McNeese. I mean, I picked Bowling Green to win the MAC this year, mainly because I think the rest of the MAC is kind of like I don't know that Bowling Green's amazing. I just think Toledo and Miami, Ohio have regressed a little bit uh, from where they were last year. But that's still a team that you should pretty easily handle. Uh, I haven't read a single good thing about Arkansas's offense so far, like other than Petrino Magic, I guess. But the scrimmage reports have been uh, iffy. I guess they threw eight picks in the last scrimmage, so uh, maybe some work to be done there still. I, I don't know how many plays that is. Like maybe it's 140 plays. So. You know, it's like a four-pick game and a 70-play game, right? Um, and then get Missouri at home, like I talked about. You know, going at Mississippi State off a of bye, so you get you get the bye to work on that interesting offense they're going to run, and uh, you know, we'll see how much defensive depth Mississippi State has. Uh, getting off to a fast start is really important. I agree with you. Um, you said you already know Coach Elko. What, what do you think? I think he's – I think I, – I, two things. I think our season, our schedule falls perfect for us. It's not the toughest. His first, but it ain't year. easy. It's not easy. I mean, any any time you go in the SEC, it's not mm-hmm. you know it's not gonna be easy. But we did escape some big time names, and no Bama, no Georgia, yep, no Ole Miss. Yep. And so you and Elko, he when he was here the first time, you know, he was an amazing defensive coordinator. Yep. Went to, went to Duke, same deal. And I mean, I, I think it was a great high for us. I I, I love the. The trajectory that we that we headed to, and man, I just hope we just put it all together now. And that's been our problem, man. We always got the team and the pieces, but we we just got to put it together for put it together. week to week and be consistent with it. You have an opinion why we haven't put it together consistently? We'll have one year really good, yep. then a couple bad years, then a really good year. Why hasn't it been consistent? Man, that's a tough one. Cause I go to I I I you can take it back to the to how we were, how the recruiting game goes, mm-hmm. because I I see a bunch of kids and I see a lot, and so we chase stars instead of players. And I think that's I think they're doing both right now. They're they're getting the right see, stars. And that, so that and that and that's what we need. Yeah. you have to have because all them all the stars. And I, I I was talking to a coach from Miami. He said, Rich, you were a five star. You're ready to come in and play day one. He said, man, Reg, if, if a kid is not ready to step on the field now, he's not five-star. He's like, so they need to stop putting those labels on the right. kids as far as five and four stars. He's like, now you get a five-star or so-called five-star that's not very good. Now that coach that think he's a five-star, not coaching him as hard because he's right. getting paid. He's the five-star. He's the guy. Yep. Now I can't just get on his head like I want to because next thing you know, he's going to transfer. So now that's we have to that we the we got to put it all together as right. far as the the stars and the kids that's not star. We have to because it's it's some stars out there that ain't stars. Yeah, and I, I see them on the regular, and I, I don't I don't want to I I just don't like the fact that a lot of coaches chase those stars instead of athletes and kids that yeah. can actually play. And then you start having them same star to be attitude problem to have issues that don't even last because. They pre McDonald's, they expect everything to be given to them and don't want to work. Yeah, and, and with NIL involved and yep. the transfer portal changes it. All right, let me let's close out with this because I know you've got the eye for a quarterback. When you see Connor Wigman. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, love it. Been 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 I I love snapping this from his release. Yeah. How quick he can get the ball out, the mental aspect of this game. Now we just gotta keep him healthy. And I I, I like our backup too. The what's his name? The the one that played in the, the bowl game? You're talking uh, about uh, Marcel Reed, yeah. talking about Jalen Henderson, yeah. yeah. Reed, yes, yeah, sir. And I like him, too. And he yeah. didn't want to play in the bowl game, right? Well, uh, Jalen started the bowl game, got hurt, and then, and he then came Marcel in. Yeah, came yeah, in sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. So, it, he, he reminded me a lot of Marcel. Yeah. That he, when I watched him play, I said, he, he reminds me a lot of Marcel. I've said it before. It was dinner the night before that game, and earlier that day I had talked to Tebow. And all three of us, all, well, those two, and believe, I was just the one – talking about that game, yep. AM Auburn. And the conversation was at that time, who's the best QB in the SEC? And Jordan's like, I got some really nice highlights. Tell, you, tell me, it, you know, like Wigman, Dart, Jaden Daniel. Now, obviously, Jaden Daniel soared. Uh, ended up winning a Heisman, should have won it, deserved it. He was incredible. No one's saying that would have been Connor, particularly on this team. Uh, there was no Malik Neighbors. 
to throw to last year. There was no Brian Thomas. But what Connor Wigman was trending towards was to be an all-conference contender. I think that's what he would be. Because, and why? Number one, he's a gamer. Okay? You go back and look at how he played in his first ever career start against a good old Miss team. Where he out Jackson Dart. You know, uh, the running back, uh, Quinshawn Judkins went crazy in that game. Jackson Dart did a lot of scrambling with his legs, had a hell of a game. But Connor Wigman, his production in that game was like that of a an All-American. Yes, it was. You look at his numbers, you look at the throws he was making, the, the way he started that game. Then you go a few weeks later to that LSU game, and that was the Devon A. Chain show. But you watch some of the throws Connor made early, some of the scrambles yep. he made early to keep games alive when it was close, and then trusting Moose Muhammad to go up and get it late and not being scared to throw him up there and let your guy score touchdowns and make big catches. He was, I think it was like 12 for 18, but he was A++ in that football game. He looked like a veteran. He looked like a fourth-year starter. He was a freshman. And then we go and talk about that Miami game. So the small sample size is why I understand if you don't have him ranked up that high. But the small sample size is also why I think you can go, if A&M is to reach its upside this year, and if A&M is to, let's just say, enter that Texas game with, with a shot, outside shot, legit shot, whatever, at the playoff, it's going to be because they rose above the LSUs and the Tennessees and the uh, I'm trying to think of these teams that I think it's so much is going to depend on their quarterback. OU with Jackson Arnold, uh, Tennessee with Nico, and then and then obviously with uh, LSU with Nussmeyer. I think I think Connor Wigman can be better than those guys this year, and if he is, then I think A and M. I think the team out of those four that moves up is which quarterback is the best. And I think that could very well be Connor Wigman. All right. Do we allow Zoe to do it or Cade to do it? Zoe, tell the people what to do. You know how to do this. Yeah, guys, we're going to like, comment, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Next week is a game week. We'll talk to you then.